generation, we happen to become very creative and imaginative because of our limitations. Yeah. Media plays a really important role, and media is becoming more and more corporatized, you know, less and less voices, and I will uh, say right here, a plug for WBAI, your awesome radio uh, station here in New York. Is, is hurting and needs some help. Um, and so I, I think we need to really support independent media uh, when we see it. You know, it's, it's getting easier to make um, films, it's getting easier to publish things on the internet and so on and so forth. And for example, with this movie that was made uh, on, you know, a Kickstarter budget of $11,000, all my friends who said, I'll help you, you know, I'll give you a song for 50 bucks. Me putting, you know, hours and hours of my time, you know, not getting paid. Um, and then, you know, I have no PR budget. My PR is room full of people like you who spread the word and that works, you know, like, and that creates people to people organizing. And, you know, we're not all going to have, um, you know, huge budgets like Yusef Salam is in an amazing, you know, Ken Burns backing this, you know, amazing. Uh, documentary, but there is there is room for youth who are getting involved in high school, like creating their own content, putting it on the web, uh, putting it on local public access channels, things like that. Um, and I think that we need to be really looking for the truth in ways uh, that we haven't been to this point. We've been really duped about, as a society, about race. And that's really what I try and focus on, is all kinds of things that we think we know about race and criminality is just plain false, just plain lies. And if people are given some of the numbers, given some of the faces on TV to, to hear their stories, as Marlene Martin talked about, like humanizing people, you know, people sitting up here seeing like they are human beings and we can't just forget about them, and if we do forget about them and put them in violent conditions and then release them, you know, with a with a permanent branded, you know, felony mark so they can't enter the legal economy again, what do we expect about crime and public safety? You know? So I don't know if I have a great answer for how we, we band together, but I do think that media plays um, media will play a role in this revolution in this, you know, reform of the criminal justice system, in creating a new justice system that is really just, in ways that it's never happened before. You know, I'm trying to tour this movie across the country, and uh, people all over the country are using media, you know, and uh, books, radio shows, to have discussions, and really start to talk about, parse out what is the truth and what are lies that we've been fed in our schools and in the corporate media. Answer obviously, but then certainly, you know, we live in a capitalist society that understands money. So if you don't spend your money on corporations and products that support that kind of programming, and then you continue obviously to write letters and make your voices heard, take out media campaigns that expose those kinds of things, that is the way that we will make a difference. Because it's kind of like, you know, the squeaky hinge is what gets the oil. So we have to make the noise and say, we're not going to support that. And educate other people as to wh what the purpose of those kinds of programs is. That the purpose is to desensitize us, to make it the norm, so that it's all right. And we feel comfortable with people living in cages for decades. <laughs> Responsibility that we have also as, as inmates or as former inmates. Like, we're not really telling the truth about prison. So, I mean, we're in a room right now who most folks may be completely aware of what goes on in the prison industrial complex. But I never forget, like, when I'm walking around the streets of Harlem and I'm looking around at these young folks who feel like it's a badge of honor to go to prison. They want to go to prison and they want to run the prison. They think that, you know, we're going to be up there, we're going to be running stuff. They don't realize that if you get into a place like that, you could be in there with five of your homies and not see any one of them.
for five to 15 years, and that's just how big that place is. You know, um, nobody's talking about the grown men that cry at night because they want to go home to their families. You know, nobody's talking about the, the officers who have these black and brown tattoos on their arms because they've taken their capes off, and now they're in everywhere in the prison system. You know, and then here we are sometimes where we'll send photos back to the streets and we'll be in those glorified poses with the big arms and you know everything, making it look like we up there running stuff and we're having a good old time. But that's the other side of the story where people know that people are being disappeared from the community. And they have this um, interest to see well what's actually going on behind the wall. You know, and I think that part of the other discussion, including the fact that we don't need to support them. You know, we can take our dollars and do something else. Um, is that we need to also tell the truth about this to make people understand prison is not the place to be. It's not the place to aspire to at all. To what to what extent? And uh, like in Rikers in Rikers Island, for example, my feeling is that most of the violence that takes place there is induced by the by the correctional officers themselves. First they separated people by their color, by the, uh, different gangs and stuff like that. And it seems like they move by brute force. When I was a kid, I saw a movie called Brute Force. Uh, in, in other words, these places are being run by brute force. Even though incarceration is down 32%, the correction officers union, they keep on insisting we should have more guards, that the inmates are, are more, are more violent now. They, they blame it on the mentally ill. I, I'm mentally ill. And I, I know when I'm depressed, I'm not going to attack anybody. If anything, I'm going to be the, the victim of crime. Right. So what, what can we do? And I'm trying to reach the correction officer's president to try and reason with him, to try and find out, is there some kind of common ground? They can't, they can't all be bad. There must be some, somebody there that has some kind of feelings. Maybe their own relatives are in prison. What can we do to straighten this thing out? I, I almost feel like it's desperate and it's hopeless. Um, that's an excellent point. Number one, what they do in the prison system, they isolate all the memories. We here, people that's here have to get involved, have to go inside, and let everybody know inside that they care, that this is part of our community, is our extended family. Um, there's an individual named Dr. Gary Mendez who used to run, um, he was the head of the Urban League, and he left and he created the National Trust for the Development of African American Men. He went from New York all the way to California into the prison systems galvanizing the communities to try to go inside. Because there's several people that can get involved and go inside no matter what. Legislators is one. They can go inside no matter what. They, some of them don't even know that they can just walk up in there. So it was our responsibility for telling our legislators that we vote for time, time, yeah, what's going on in there? Get you in there. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Number two, our religious entities can go inside no matter what also. They got free reign. So if you're part of a church, get your church involved. That's what's made me think here at the campaign and the Jim Crow. We stress caring communities, and it's going to start by one person at a time. Right here, show of hands. How many people out there are you, you know, are you with knowing your neighbor, your left and right neighbor? How many of y'all know your neighbors? See? That's not a lot. So right now, everybody who didn't raise their hand, you have the responsibility of knowing your neighbor on the left side of you, on your right side. It's going to start small. We're not just going to take down the live right away, but David did take him down. That's right. Right? That's With some right. perseverance. So there's several things that we can do. And, and those are the first ones. You know, you can start writing letters to your assemblymen uh, or the reverends. You can start getting involved. Like, hey, campaign in New Jim Crow. We meet right here. <laughs> and when you do it, don't shout us out. We need assistance. You know, one thing that I, I, I believe, like I said, education can change everything. We need to change those policies. Because in the state system right now, they're making it even harder for family members to go see families. They do it, this grunt, like, uh, um, there's a sister here, this is Jessica Peterson, she, she, she gives, she has a whole slew of things, what she gives in her, in her presentation, how she has to wear a certain amount of clothes, and, and, you know, so she don't go in, so she don't beat, so she don't have to get her anus looked at. This is crazy. So they're criminalizing our people also. And if you're not getting involved, then you don't know. But you have to get involved. I, I watched the film before I came here, not today, but I watched it. And one of the things that came up for me is that um, there was, I think, a line that said how many people are coming home or being released every year. 
Well, I mean, if you think about the numbers of people being released, and you think about how many people have been silenced due to stigma, right? Their numbers are huge. So how do we get folks that have been impacted, directly impacted, to overcome the stigma, to be able to speak out? These folks are working in areas and in places and in corporations that we don't even know where they are because they hide. People hide after they've had this experience because of the shame and the guilt and the way of society because Believe it or not, we live in a punitive society. We like to see people get punished. Yes, um, yes. So we have to encourage people who've had the experience. How do we encourage people? How do we get folks that have had this experience to come forward and to use whatever power they have, wherever they work, to make changes? So, um, I mean, that was one of the things that I was thinking about. I, I agree with uh, Sophia that the best defense is to get involved. The best defense, I mean, there are many, many organizations in, in New York that you can involve yourself with in the work that they're doing. The Correctional Association does phenomenal work. In fact, they're going up to speak to legislators in April. You should all join their committees and be involved.